Awakening, Scrooge found himself in his bedroom. There was no doubt about that, but it and his own adjoining sitting room, into which he shuffled in his slippers, attracted by a great light there, had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were so hung with living green that it looked a perfect grove. The leaves of holly, mistletoe, and ivy reflected back the light, as if many little mirrors had been scattered there, and such a mighty blaze went roaring up the chimney, as that petrifaction of a hearth had never known in Scrooge's time, or Marley's, or from many and many a winter season gone. Heaped upon the floor, to form a kind of throne, were turkeys, geese, game, brawn, great joints of meat, sucking pigs, long wreaths of sausages, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red-hot chestnuts, cherry-cheeked apples, juicy oranges, luscious pears, immense twelfth cakes, and great bowls of punch. In easy state upon this couch there sat a giant, glorious to see, who bore a glowing torch, in shape not unlike Plenty's horn, and who raised it high to shed its light on Scrooge as he came peeping round the door. Come in, come in, and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before. Never. Have never walked forth with the younger members of my family, meaning, for I am very young. My elder brothers born in these late years, pursued the I don't think I have. I'm afraid I have not. Have you many brothers, spirit? More than eighteen hundred, said the ghost. A tremendous family to provide for, muttered Scrooge. The ghost of Christmas present rose. Spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I learnt a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe! Scrooge did as he was told and held fast. The room and its contents all vanished instantly, and they stood in the city streets upon a snowy Christmas morning. Scrooge and the ghost passed on, invisible, straight to Scrooge's clerks. And on the threshold of the door, the spirit smiled and stopped to bless Bob Cratchit's dwellings with the sprinklings of his torch. Think of that! Bob had but fifteen Bob a week himself. He pocketed on Saturdays but fifteen copies of his Christian name. And yet the ghost of Christmas present blessed his four-roomed house. Then. Up rose Mrs. Cratchit, Cratchit's wife, dressed out but poorly in a twice-turned gown, brave in ribbons, which are cheap and make a goodly show for sixpence, and she laid the cloth, assisted by Belinda Cratchit, second of her daughters, also brave in ribbons, while Master Peter Cratchit plunged a fork into the saucepan of potatoes, and getting the corners of his monstrous shirt collar, Bob's private property, conferred upon his son and heir in honor of the day, into his mouth, rejoiced to find himself so gallantly attired, and yearned to show his linen in the fashionable park. And now two smaller Cratchits, boy and girl, came tearing in, screaming that outside the baker's they had smelt the goose, and known it for their own, and basking in luxurious thoughts of sage and onion. These young Cratchits danced around the table and exalted Master Peter Cratchit to the skies, while he, not proud although his collars nearly choked him, blew the fire until the slow potatoes, bubbling up, knocked loudly at the saucepan lid to be let out and peeled. What has ever got your precious father then, said Mrs. Cratchit, and your brother Tiny Tim? 
And Martha weren't as late last Christmas Day by half an hour. Here's Martha, Mother, said a girl, appearing as she spoke. Here's Martha, Mother, cried the two young Cratchits. Hurrah, there's such a goose, Martha. Why, bless your heart alive, my dear, how late you are, said Mrs. Cratchit, kissing her a dozen times and taking off her shawl and bonnet for her. We'd a deal of work to finish up last night, replied the girl, and had to clear away this morning, Mother. Well, never mind, so long as you are come, said Mrs. Cratchit. Sit ye down before the fire, my dear, and have a warm, Lord bless ye. No, no, there's father coming, cried the two young Cratchits, who were everywhere at once. Hide, Martha, hide! <laughs> 